What's going on, Tom, for Success Summit attendees? My name is Jason Pantana. I'm a business coach, a national speaker, and host of our Marketing Edge event here for Tom Ferry World, Universe, whatever you want to call it. And I'm really pumped about this session. I get to sit with two brilliant, uh, I guess I would call them marketeers, I would call them tech innovators, uh, creators of Y Lopo, which a lot of you are like, yeah, I knew that. I came to a session called Y Lopo. Let me tell you what we're going to get into today. I, I have a bunch of questions. I sent them questions in advance. So they've got like slides and visuals and they're gonna give like quality answers to these questions. And really our topic today is about the future of digital marketing. This is not meant to be some product push per se or anything like that. So I wanna put you at ease right now that this session is about getting answers to the future of digital marketing. We'll talk about strategy. We'll talk about dynamic ads. We'll talk about retargeting. We're gonna talk about a lot of advanced stuff, but also we're gonna, I don't wanna scare you off. We're gonna talk about advanced stuff through the lens of technology that exists today, that's real now, that makes it so much easier to be effective and cutting edge in your own business. So hang in there with us for the session. It's gonna be incredible. Um, before we jump in, I wanna bring our guest on. Uh, I've got Howard and G, the masterminds and architects, founder of Ylopo. Howard, G, how are you guys today? How's it going? Excellent. Excited so, to be here, man. Thanks for doing this. We're really excited. You guys are willing to kind of share what's behind the curtain in terms of how YLOPO approaches business. Um, so I, I kind of tease this. Howard, if you would share your screen up, I know you've got a bunch of slides and visual aids and things ready to go. Um, I've got questions here too. I gave them the questions in advance. That's why they have visuals. So they can really, really dive into what are gonna be some gritty types of questions. Uh, so anything you guys wanna say before I roll or do you wanna just cut to it? Let's, go, let's, let's go. Let's dive in. All right. There's my words on the screen. The strategy, right? The strategy. Can you guys talk to us real quick about just the overarching strategy? You got big players like Zillow and Realtor and portals and search and all this stuff. What's the strategy right now from the perspective of an independent solo or team kind of agent? Yeah, I think, I think it's important. I think we're going to go like high and low today. So we're going to talk, which is cool. Like if people's like, what do I do? Like these guys are spending billions of dollars on marketing. Like I'm getting crunched. What do I do? And that really has been our mission, which is to help solo agents, small teams become mid-sized teams, mid-sized teams become large teams and give them millions of dollars worth of technology that even the big guys don't have and be ahead of them. Right? So that's what we do. We're trying to empower folks with all this great cutting edge stuff. But there's like a very high level thing that people need to think about to beat the big guys kind of at their own game, right? And basically the way to think about it is like this river, this stream, right? And if you want to play with the big guys, you want to play with Zillow and Realtor.com and all these guys, like the cost to fish downstream just keeps going up. I was on the phone yesterday with a client. And he's like, yeah, I spoke to one of these guys. They just raised my prices 90% in one call. That wasn't like 90%, like 9% a year over 10 years. In one call, they raised the cost 90%. So the cost to buy the fish from those guys, right, downstream, that fishing license is crazy expensive, right? It's just nuts. It's, it's prohibitive for most of us, right? So, and also once it gets down there and they got all these agents feeding on it, like the game's over, right? So we want to go upstream. We want to help our clients go way upstream, fish upstream, where you can fish like the national average for, you know, geez, a master marketer. And they've got like crazy, crazy results with social media leads at like sub $3 or next generation paper leads at like sub $7, right? You can store up a lot of fish, like, if, you know, at those rates, right? Versus $150 of fish or $200 of fish. But but the key is this, and, and, and Jason, you and I have talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the old Tiger League days, like, okay, we're generating these leads, right? But there wasn't this great nurture technology, and there wasn't this great cutting edge, like, communication technology. The technology that we're going to show you, and then that's we're going to drill down the details, the details of the nurture and the communication technology, which automates our clients' lives. Like, it's done for them and completely automated. The point of that is, to keep the fish coming back, to keep the fish coming back, keep them out. They never go downstream. They stay in the branded client fish bowl, right? They stay with your brand, not someone else's brand. They keep coming back to your home search, to your website, your home valuation tool, whether it's buyers or sellers, keep them in your fish bowl. And we move them along. The tech moves them along. 
from the aspirational stage to the researching stage to the ready to transact stage and never lets them go. I think so, if I could chime in too, like I think absolutely. that's true because when you think about the world of uh, marketing, the job of marketing, and I've talked about this with Tom before on numerous podcasts, ultimately is to try to drive trust, to get folks to be familiar with what you're doing and to build that rapport and that sense of, ah, I wouldn't work with anybody else. But if you kind of show up at the last minute, um, actually it's funny, you call this the aspirers, the researchers, the ready to transact. We call this walking, jogging, running. When we teach marketing edge, same kind of a thing, right? What's their pace that which they're moving right now? And if they're in a state of running, that's our metaphor, our analogy, right? But it's like, you got to catch up and mirror that. It's a lot more work to convert versus if they're in an earlier stage, you can kind of keep pace with them and build that rapport, build that trust. So man, I, from a marketing standpoint, I love the, I love the slide. I love it. Well, the cool thing is that, is that we don't physically now have to keep an eye on all of them. The tech can do that. The tech can tell us when they're jumping from this ball to this ball to this ball. And that's the details we're gonna kind of like go in and I'm really excited to share it. But it's really important to know, and this is like, it's a lot about Wailopo and I get that. This is really not, we're not here to sell Wailopo, pitch Wailopo. This is the world we know, the world we built for our clients. So we have to talk about what we built. Okay, but, you about what you do, by the way. Yeah, but, but, but the point being is that whether you work with us or anyone else, a lot of good providers out there, Jason, yep. on the buyer side, like home search is critical. It's why they'll come to you. It's why they'll keep coming back. And the bottom line is that your home search sucks, right? They're not coming back. And also oh, it's like, no. let's, put, let's put your brand on it. Not my brand, not my local's brand. Like Barry Jenkins, he's a great client of ours. He's a realtor in residence. Let's have his brand all over it. That's what you were just talking about, right? Yeah, so it's like white people, killer brand. home search, I love it. Yeah. So on the seller side, we've been thinking really, really deeply on the seller side. We, we again, you and I talked about it. We're going to be in a, in a really prolonged seller market, I think. And so it's not necessarily the home search experience, but it's this like dropping this like this, this, this tool, this bug in their home so that they can always interact with and explore the financial DNA of their home, which is always changing. And one of the things we're going to say over and over and over again, this pres is dynamic, the word dynamic, but no one ever explains it, right? Like, what does it mean? Dynamic. It means that data is always changing. Home searcher behavior is always changing. Home seller behavior is always changing. Data from the IDX data feed from your MLS is always changing. Price is going up, price is going down, new listings, things going pending, things going sold. And this is where G, who hasn't said a word yet, but he's going to talk, <laughs> who is the genius. <laughs> this is what separates everything else from static to dynamic. So one of your clients hooked me up yesterday with this, with what I'm looking at on my screen right now. Um, and I got it and I found myself probably spending too much time looking at all the details and whatnot. <laughs> there's a lot of details, but as a homeowner, I saw the value immediately. And one of the things that's been a longstanding challenge is we've had listing alerts, even back like just straight up MLS. I can put you on an automated listing alert and send you emails whenever listings hit the market that meet your criteria. And, and there's this built in ongoing nature of the marketing. But when you look at the seller side, we've had the home valuation tools for a while, but it's one valuation and then poof, you evaporate, you're gone. And a tool like this, like I think that's what the power of the word dynamic is, is because things are changing, I have an impetus now to reach out to you on an ongoing basis and make sure I'm staying in touch and give you all that data. Yeah, I mean, think about it. if you're a buyer and you're interested in between, you know, 250 and 350 in a certain town, right? And all of a sudden there's new listings in that range, in that town, shaming us and we don't get it to you right away. But on the seller side, if something happens in your neighborhood that raises the value of your home, shaming us if we don't tell you about that and get you to engage in it. Love that, man. <laughs> so, right. yeah. You walk me right into my next question, which is I've been hearing about this word dynamic over and over and over again. You just kind of teased it up a little bit. But it seems to be sort of foundational in how you guys see the world of marketing now. Can you sort of elaborate on your strong feelings about that word dynamic? Sure. And, and I think we'll bring G in because he's really was on the forefront of working with Facebook to bring, you know, well, there was a problem. We always like to solve problems. And the problem was that people were like, yeah, I tried a bunch of marketing on Facebook and it just didn't work. Right. And then G rolled up his sleeves, worked every day with Facebook. Right. And then Facebook literally has other divisions now calling us saying, Hey, can you do this in insurance? <laughs> right. Anyway. So G take us through what dynamic means on social media and we'll keep going through that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, the, the principle behind dynamic advertising is that the difference between Facebook and offline marketing, for instance, like a billboard, right, is that the time that someone invests in looking at your content is such a small window, right? Facebook actually told us that they consider brand awareness with an advertisements in two seconds of attention span right? Think about what type of information you can con convey in two seconds. Well, and I think so they do like wait, half a second is an impression. It's nuts, right? It's nuts. It's nuts. Absolutely. And so <clears throat> from an advertising perspective, what, what you need to do to capture the attention of the consumer, and, and by the way, on Facebook, think of it as you have a captive audience that are looking at your advertisements you know, not all the time, but over and over again, all the time, right? And if you show the same thing to that consumer, guess what? They're going to tune out, right? The principle be behind dynamic advertising is that in any situation, it is always better to give information that is different and compelling every single time they see your advertisement, right? That's the principle behind dynamic advertisement. And guess what? This has been the dream of marketers like you and, and me for decades, I would say, right? And for the first time, probably in the last two or three years, technology finally caught up to the point where we can do this at scale, right? On the Facebook advertising side, what's phenomenal is that they actually allow us to upload a data feed of listings directly into the Facebook environment and then use the technology behind it to programmatically figure out out of thousands of homes, what are the five to 10 homes that a consumer is going to be most interested in when they view your advertisement. And that advertisement is going to change all the time, right? And we do this for buyers and we do this for sellers. When a consumer clicks on this advertisement on the next slide here, Facebook actually has a feature, if you guys don't know about it, called Facebook Lead Ads. This is a registration form that pops up immediately into their Facebook screen that takes the contact information from their profile, inputs into the screen, asks a couple of questions, and become a lead for you, right? So this is the lowest friction possible way to capture leads on the web today because they have so much information about you. Uh, now, once you capture the lead, you have to, as Howard said, send them into a high-end home search experience that's branded to you, right? It makes no sense after this experience to send them to a home search website that asks them to register again, that doesn't have complete information, that doesn't pay off the advertisement. You know, this is why we don't use stock photos in our advertisement, right? It's a bait and switch. They click on a beautiful looking home, they come to your home search website, they don't see that listing, guess what? They lost, you lost trust with that consumer. You got, you got their contact information, but they're never going to work with you again right? So <clears throat> once you capture them into a beautiful seamless home search exper experience, next slide, Howard, um, <clears throat> you can keep them in your fishbowl from a remarketing, dynamic remarketing perspective, which we're going to talk about in a second here, right? Now, the dynamic concept of what we're doing on social is now bleeding over into other formats as well. On the PPC side, for instance, we are doing some amazing things around dynamic advertising. The, the old way of, uh, I'll just show, give you guys a couple examples, right? The old way of doing Google pay-per-click 1.0, for instance, is when someone types in the keyword homes for sale in Calgary, right? What shows up? An ad that says new homes for sale in Cal Calgary with a bunch of text, right? Well, the problem with that is this is the same approach that every single other person advertising for homes for sale in Calgary is going to show you, right? How do you stand out? So on the next slide here, we're going to show you what we're doing, right? With, with Google now, what you're able to do, and not, not this doesn't just apply to YLOPO, you, you can do this with other cutting edge digital marketing platforms. You should absolutely ask them, are you using dynamic content in your Google advertisement? What we're able to do is actually take live data from the MLS and insert it into the advertising environment on the ad itself, right? So instead of saying new homes are Calgary, we're saying 910 new Calgary homes are sale. XYZ price reduction, XYZ open houses. And guess what? The click-through rate between the old ad and the new ad is almost 30 to 40%, which in Google land is a tremendous improvement. It's going to make you stand out against the competition. So, so you know, this is what I love about it being dynamic. Like on the social media side, it's all about showing the right home to the right person at the right time because they're not going to click through it like in the newsfeed unless we already know that it was something of interest. And they go through and like, is that you? It's yes. And they, boom, seamless. This is the really critical word, seamless. So they don't go to this site, which is now irrelevant to what, how they just came in. They came in on a certain home. Show them that home and 28 homes that are relevant to that home. They came in as a buyer, don't show them a seller page. They come in as a seller, 
don't show them, don't show them homes, right? So that's what's critical. And same thing now we can do this for the first time ever on Google. And I think G and his team have really changed the game of Google marketing. Because honestly, Jason, I think the rest of the crowd still doing it the, the way we did it in 2007. Oh, so if I could chime in, so like with the dynamic product catalog, like you said, you have the ability to connect Facebook's ad platform with your IDX or whatever type of website it is. And then you have the ability to start learning. I was going to ask you, G, um, your goal in, on the, I'm going back to Facebook for a second. Your yep. goal is to show people houses they're probably interested in. Can yep. you talk to me just real quickly about how you determine what kinds of houses they're interested in? Yeah, hundred percent. So, so what we actually do is when we send listings, to the MLS, we tag every single listing with the metadata of what type of consumers that listing is relevant for. Right. So like for instance, front, on, golf, that kind of waterfront thing. golf, V veterans, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, VA loan qualified, you know, uh, vacation property, all of that kind of stuff, right? So on the left-hand side here, you see an ad targeting for a client in Hawaii, only consumers. And this is what's great about Facebook, right? You can actually target down to the demographic level. So I can actually show someone who is active duty, military, or a veteran, only homes that are VA loan qualified. I can show only golf enthusiasts, homes on golf courses. So we're marrying the demographic with the properties that we've tagged with the metadata that they're appropriate for. Okay, got it. I know, I know it's super technical, but I love that. And I think what you said has got, it's got a ring of truth that you want to keep putting your brand in front of people, but if you don't vary what it is you're offering to them, it's the same old thing. It becomes monotonous and annoying. And so the dynamic features, and, and again, I, I want to be candid for everybody watching, those tools, they're Facebook tools. It's just a matter of having a system that utilizes those tools, just like you said with Google, which this one's making me kind of happy to talk about. Uh, that's a Google tool. It's just, are you doing dynamic uh, dynamic keyword based advertising. And so this is, this is to keep going, but this is new well, this, to me. Jason, this press is so cutting edge. Like we haven't even released this yet to the wild. Okay. So we are literally beta testing this now with I just can only imagine the click through rate. I really, cause <laughs> I like 42, I saw 42 new homes just listed. I'm like click in my own head because that's yeah. so super relevant to what I'm looking for. Anyways, well, on the buyer side, yeah, on the buyer side, we've released that. Like that's we just released that. But now we're also now getting into dynamic ads on the seller side as well. <laughs> All yeah. right, through G. G, can you 100%. talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so here's an example, right? I mean, what is the seller data that is compelling? It's how many homes have recently sold in my neighborhood? What What's the average price point of the homes that are sold? How many days on market are homes selling for, right? What we're able to do is take all of this live data. And, you know, if you're typing in, hey, what's my home worth, right? To see an advertisement that actually shows you the leading data going into that conversation, you're going to get a much higher click-through rate, right? And what's really important about this is when you're competing on the seller side, you're competing against the real big boys, right? So it's not just Zillow, Realtor.com. It's also OfferPad, Open Listings, you know, all, uh, you know, all of the major portals that all they do all day is generate seller ads or seller leads. And so you need to really stand out. And that's what dynamic advertising does. The second part is you need to have a compelling offer for the consumer, right? If you're a you know, offer pattern, open door, your compelling offer is we're going to buy this home from you and guarantee you a closing date. What are you as an agent going to offer them? This is why we have spent a lot of our time developing this home DNA concept that is going to inbox into, you know, your, um, uh, your, your email and through remarketing to the consumer on a weekly basis that shows them dynamic data about their home. Well, we're gonna lead with that on our registration page as to why they should give us their contact information because they're going to get this value added content, right? And what we found is that when we give them real value, because you know if you're doing what's my home worth, right? Typically, what, what do you do? You throw up a landing page, you get their address, and then at some point you say, Hey, thanks for giving me information. I will contact you about, you know, your, your property value. Email address so I can actually send it over, that kind of, yeah, I get it. Exactly. It, it, again, it's a bait and switch, right? When, when someone fills out the registration form on our website, and again, you should do this with any provider, is at the end of the process, we give you something of value, right? What we're finding is on this registration experience, we're getting, to a, at a, we're getting a conversion rate of 11 to 12% right? That is about as high as I've seen in the industry for this type of conversion. And it's not just the conversion. It's afterwards, as Jason experienced himself, 
the inboxing of this valuable content, this home DNA, right into his email, into his remarketing. Yeah, I can't wait for an update so I can keep looking at it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and, and you can contact us and we'll, we'll show you the home DNA. You know, it's really, really detailed reporting about what the asset of their home actually looks like and all the different things they can do with their asset, including, of oh. course, selling their home and buying a new one. I was able to go in because we renovated some stuff that hasn't been updated in tax systems yet because it's just happened. I was able to go in and update it myself and then get adjusted values. And it was easy peasy. It was a nice tool. So, all right. So a lot of talk about targeting and lead generation, dynamic targeting, I should say, to generate leads. Now let's talk about what happens once you get the leads. Walk us through how you guys see the world through retargeting or remarketing. Yeah, so, you know, as a backdrop, like everyone's had listing alerts for a long time, right? But were they truly dynamic? Did they really follow someone that's like, okay, pre-pandemic, someone was really interested in buying in New York City, that was their life dream. Post-pandemic, maybe now they want to buy in the countryside, right? They're killing it now in Connecticut and New Jersey and upstate New York and all these places, right? So, you know, we're, we're, we are not only, there's two things here, right? which is the listing alerts are critical, but G can talk about this, like they need to be dynamic, they need to be bonded. And I want you to talk about what that means, a bonded listing alert. But the real game changer is not just the dynamic listing alerts, but, but doubling, tripling the return to the fishbowl or the return to the site, right? By doing the dynamic remarketing. So let's talk about the listing alerts, then G, let's talk about the remarketing. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, you know, email is something that's been around forever. And the reason it's been around forever is because it actually still works, right? Uh, we, our listing alerts get anywhere from a 70 to 80% open rate, you know, a 25 to 30% click through rate into the home search website. And the reason that's so significant is because all of that traffic, it's free, right? You don't have to pay any money to get these people to come to your website. The challenge is that based on NAR findings, a average consumer looks at three to five different home search websites before, during their home search, right? So for you, you are one of many different listing alerts that are inboxing into our client's email account. Why would they choose to use yours, right? So we do two things on the email listing alert side. And again, every provider that you work with, you should ask them, how do you actually send out your listing alerts? The first thing we do is we check after every single listing they view, should we adjust their listing alert and send them new listings? That's first and foremost, and, and that's par for the course. If your system isn't doing that, like then you need to get a new you know, how, how EP, IDX MLS system, right? The, the second is bonded well, listing alerts. Know, uh, G, Jason wanna know how does it check? How does it check? Sure, so uh, we, let's say you, you started viewing homes in Santa Monica and Los Angeles, right? Then you narrowed your search and you're starting to look for homes in Venice. We immediately add Venice as a new location in the same price range for you in the listing alert. Nice, love it. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, yeah, of course. Bonded listing alerts are when a consumer has shown significant interest in a particular home, right? Then we will, anytime that status of that home changes, send them another listing alert about that property. That listing alert almost always gets open, right? Because the consumer wants to know for the homes that they favorited, they viewed five times, they've shared with their spouse, that what is happening with that particular property, right? So two tricks of the trade that everyone should be leveraging right now. On the dynamic remarketing side, you know, this is the technology that Facebook released probably two to three years ago that has started to get to, you know, adoption in the industry, but frankly, I still don't think people use enough. Not even close. What? Not even close, right? What's going on here is this is listing alert 2.0, social listing alerts. What, what, what we're able to do is when a consumer comes to your home search website, or let's say that you were, um, you know, you have a lead that's in your database that has been lying fallow and dead for a long time. We take the initial search locations that you provide us, right, uh, from a, you know, a lead that is another system. And we will start showing this consumer when they come on Facebook homes that are similar to the ones that they viewed the last time they visited their, your website or they visited your database, right? So this is an alert that now follows them around on social media, on mobile apps that are showing them relevant listings. And we're seeing a 15 to 20% click through rate, which in, in Facebook land is like 0.001% from an engagement perspective. Right. And the, cool, the coolest thing, Ryan, is like, notice if you really read the text here on the left-hand side, based on our preferences, these are the homes that meet your criteria, that's the buyer side. 
On the right-hand side, Hi Neighbors compiled the latest sold properties that could directly impact your home price. So the remarketing and the nurture, not just on the buyer side anymore, but also on the seller side, because the seller side is so important right now. And I assume the way these are targeting, it's gonna be similar to what we talked about earlier on, where we are making the catalog. So like homes on the golf course, homes with waterfront views. So you already have a built-in tagging structure in your whole system. Yep. So that it could just say, oh, this one matches up with this catalog, show them houses like this. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it also involves kind of an integration with your MLS uh, website, right? Your IDX website. And, and so, you know, every time you view a listing on a site, so like we go as, depth, as in depth as every time you view a home, we send that data to Facebook. Every time you scroll down on a listing and view the property details, we send that to Facebook. You share the listing, you, you view a listing multiple times. And the more data that you give to Facebook, and you give them a catalog of homes, the better they can match up the listings. Yep. So you send it to them so that they can then put the right picture basically in front of the consumer. A hundred percent. That's yeah. exactly right. Yep. And yep. again, it's like, it's like we're doing, we're, we're thinking about this stuff deeply on the buyer side and on the seller side, right? And you got to do both, right? Because we know that a lot of times the first thing a seller does is they're figuring out, well, what am I going to buy? And That's they haven't right. even... Right? Yeah. Earliest point of detection of the seller is where should we move? That's like the earliest point. Right. Or, or maybe it's like, well, what is my home worth? And then I can figure out where I'm going to look. And like, so I don't care. Like, we don't care where they start because now we got them both, right? Are they going to start I'm, on? Like, yeah. look at me. I'm playing on both sides. I'm like, yeah. literally, me as a case study, I'm like, okay, my neighborhood seems to be a little bit inflated compared to other neighborhoods. I see an opportunity to sell this house and then move to a neighborhood I'd rather be in at a lateral move right now. So like I'm looking at the looking at the DNA here of what's my house worth and what's going on in the marketplace. So that's the nature of a seller. They're playing both fronts. So anyways, continue guys. This is well, we like to say, we like to say jab jab right hook. Jab jab right hook. It's one of Kiwi's favorite expressions, right? So yep. they get an email on the buyer side, they get an email with the relevant listing alerts that they're bonded, right? Then that's going into their news feed and social media. On the seller side, they're getting this email about how their home value might have changed. They're seeing that same information when they go to Facebook 13.5 times a day, right? So it's jab, yep. jab, right up, get your brand and your message everywhere. and your valuable tools everywhere. Yeah. Yep. And then real quick, just on the bonded piece. So yep. just to make sure we understood that together. Bonded means like if I'm looking at a particular property on the agent's website, if it has an open house, if it gets a price reduction, if it gets a contract, it's going to notify me with an email. That's what it means that you're bonded. 100%. Right, exactly. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, so the one little missing piece here is it's really cool all this stuff's happening. And we've got all these buyers and all these sellers engaging and coming back. But agents are busy. They're really, really busy, right? So we had to basically, like, we keep going down this, this path of, like, tapping them on the shoulder. So we tap them on the shoulder and say, okay, this buyer just did this. Now, we're not going to tap them on the shoulder, Jason, every single time someone interacts because that's like all day long. But when it's an elevated behavior, when they've shared a home with their significant other, they've looked at one, like you look at this one particular home for the fifth time. You know what, Jason? You might like that home, right? And we've got to tap the agent and send them these priority alerts. So we thought deeply, we interviewed so many agents, like what actions would you rank as really urgent? Like obviously a showing request is super urgent, right? Okay, but like they've looked at the home once, not so urgent. So we ranked all that and then the really, really important actions, they're gonna get priority alerts on the buyer side as well as on the, on the, on the seller side as well, right? So hey, Josh just came back, really dug in and the, on, the, on the financial DNA and boom, right? We've tapped them on the shoulder. It's going to show up in their CRM and they're going to actually get, they're going to actually get a text message. So I that's, that's, cool. I think that's super smart. Um, Cause it's like, you're right. There's going to be, I mean, you were talking about what was the number you were giving before in terms of cost per lead at the beginning of our session, it was really low. And yeah. we're, we're doing the fish analogy. We're, gonna, we're talking about a lot of leads. And so I think it's hypercritical as a busy agent. You get some kind of intelligence that's like, Hey, this one right here is the one to go for. This one here is taking a high intent action, follow up there so you can be a little bit more prioritized. But if you would click forward for me, Howard, uh, you walked right into my next question, which is I've heard so much talk about Raya. Raya, your texting artificial intelligent bot. 
Um, can you kind of like, maybe people who are watching, like they're right now saying, I heard somebody talk about Raya. Just tell us all about Raya and how it's pretty much integral to what you all are doing in your process. Yeah. So, you know, so there's really kind of like two parts, I believe, of, of using AI effectively. There's a lot of AI, Jason, in the industry. You know that. But I call it generic AI. It's just very generic. It's again, not dynamic. What does that mean? It's not based on certain things changing, certain behaviors changing, right? It's not necessarily watching the buyers or the sellers behavior. If it's really watching their behavior. Now we happen to be unique position. We have that data. So we have the data, we can act on it, right? So, so there's the sort of reactive AI where they really engage in a high priority way on the buyer side, or they really engage in a high priority way on the seller side, we can now program, right, a text message to go out that's very specific to what they did. So, and it's automated, our clients have to do, it's completely automated, but it's so spot on to what the consumer did, the consumer doesn't know that it's automated. They think that this is a really, really, like with it, watching careful agent, right? I've heard that over and over again from your clients. I've heard that the Raya is so good. Some people are like, Raya is better than I am. <laughs> so anyway. We just got off a webinar and it was a, it was a webinar we did. We had a lot of like the biggest teams in the world are with us, but we have a lot of small teams too. So we did a webinar just for our small teams. And they were like, oh man, we think we have like a big team because Raya never stops working. She's working 24 seven. She doesn't get sick. She has a great attitude. I don't have to pay her anything. <laughs> you know, like there's no commission split. I've, and heard, I, I've heard that AI can handle some curveballs too, where the, the text response is just a total curveball. And like where even, it, where even where it warrants like sympathies and I've heard Raya can step in and handle it. Yeah, we're really limited on time. I'm actually going to show you some Raya's. Like, we're really limited on time, but like, there's one I can show you in the future where somebody was literally just drunk at night and looking at lots and lots of homes and didn't really want to buy a home. And Raya, like, was just like, oh, no worries. Like, that's cool, right? Yeah, and like, there was someone who like just had a death in the family, and Raya was like, oh, it's not a, you know, there was sympathy, right? So like, she can do all that stuff. I'm going to show you a really cool one, uh, you know, coming right up. But but the the game changers when we're now also proactive. What do you want your, your agents doing? What do you want your ISA doing? Reach out, reach out, call, text, email, call, text, email, reach out. Raya can do this for your team. And when a guy was on the panel today, he's like, I woke up, Raya was in the middle of like a 20 minute conversation. He's like, I love it, it was fantastic. So it's being proactive, that's really, really cool. So let's actually play one. Let's do it. Hi Judy, it's Ashley's assistant with Kelly Williams. We wanted to check in on you and see if anything good or bad stood out about the homes you saw on Facebook. There are several in the Wyoming area that I believe you missed. I could send some to you if you like. Is judy at gmail.com still a good email for you? Did someone use your number? So she keeps mistake? pinging. She keeps pinging. These cheating. are staggered over time, I Jason. Found a few yeah. homes Just occasionally, it's not all of a sudden, she occasionally keeps pinging. Found. And it's based upon activities they're taking on the website? That's correct. Yep. Today and I saw boom. some two-bedroom, two-bathroom townhomes, taken a while. but they were too There's expensive. a response. I'm at this time only looking. This is actual. Are you considering yeah. a move within the next year or so? It all depends on my health. I'm living in Chisago City at the same home since 1975. Lots of steps. No pressure. It's always a good idea to get started looking <laughs> So let's make sure everyone understands. This is not a real person. <laughs> this is an automated, artificially intelligent text chat box. And this Depends consumer on has was. no idea. It was built in They're just going back and forth. Understood. Thanks so much for this info. It helps us out a lot. I ask you an off the script while I for this finish. Personalized search for properties you might like. I'd love to get a little more information from you if possible. Have you been pre-qualified for a loan? So or this is important. Like realtor might be working with a lender partner, right? Just guessing a townhome around 500,000. Cash payment. Ashley would be happy to do an in-home analysis so, so you know what your home is worth. And ultimately, what you'll have to bring to your next house. So why the different voice? This is the agent stopped yes, Raya. Definitely. The agent stopped Raya and the agent Great. started texting themselves. But still as the persona, the as the persona of their minutes. assistant. Around 1 p.m. should work. And they just made an appointment Perfect. to meet in person. So the agent could just take over, like yeah. autopilot off, I'm taking over at any point. I also get your preferred right. phone. That, that's the, Here's Ashley's That's phone. the key thing, which is, which is this, is, this, this technology is not here to replace the agent. 
It's to make them efficient. It's to give them a whole team member without having to buy a whole team member, right? It's to get this person up to this point of a face-to-face -face appointment, right? But now the agent becomes important. The agent becomes super relevant and they've got to do what they've got to do. I got to show you this one. It's really cool. We don't have the time for today. Before we play, can I, I just want to say one thing real quick while it's loading up. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had always thought before, like, well, the hole in all this is I'm assuming with Raya and the activity and the remarketing, I'm assuming that the consumer is actually using my website and not other websites and I'm missing all the data. But when G tells me about your click-through rates on those ads, I'm like, wow, that's a really large sample of actually active leads back on the website, which means all of a sudden Raya and the activity and the predictive analysis actually means something. So I, I'm a little, I'm kind of geeking out at that data point with your click-through rates, but if you would, uh, roll this beautiful footage for us, Howard. This is, this is like part of the mission, which what we get so excited, it's like, we know that an agent and small teams and medium-sized teams, they're not gonna invest millions of dollars to build AI technology. Well, but that was my other question, which we don't have time for, is yeah. where did that technology come from? Who built that? But I'll ask you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a whole other webinar. Watch this. Hello, Inez. This is Ryan's assistant with EXP Realty. I saw you viewed some properties on our website and on Facebook in the Groveland area. Are you looking for yourself or for a friend? Ines, would you like there? Message goes out. Message goes out. No response. No response. No response. No response. I just realized it's like And staggered over a long period, right? Yep. I need Spanish people. El español es mi primer idioma. ¿Cómo podemos ayudar? ¿Está pensando en comprar una casa pronto o solo en vender? So, so why was there no response, no response, no response, no response? He didn't speak English. <laughs> so at some point he said, he did a Google translate, he goes, I need Spanish people. That was his best translation. And bam, she switches okay. to Spanish. My clients have lost their mind <laughs> with this. This is where it's going. And honestly, where it's going, Jason, is like at some point it will be like my voice. It's kind of scary, right? It is my actual voice, but it'll be, it'll be, It'll be automated. So okay. look, we can, yeah. we can run away from it. We can run away from it. Kind of creeps me out, but we can embrace it to save us time and get us appointments. And that's what we're doing yeah. for. Like I see that. I'm like, wow, I'm surprised Apple doesn't convert that into my language on my phone preferences. But still, the fact that you guys are thinking on that level is nuts. That's, that's kind of like, I'm going to give you, I'm going to push the sound button. <laughs> it's incredible. I love it. All right, let's talk about video, video, video. I've been hearing this thing from some of your clients called Diva. Uh, Diva and video. Uh, we know, like, you're at a Tom Ferry conference. Everybody knows, like, video, video, video. Uh, it's king and queen. But talk to us about how you guys are viewing it and how you're, what is this Diva product? What does that look like? By the way, Jason, don't you love these names? Raya, real estate AI is your assistant. Diva, <laughs> Diva stands for dynamic video ads. So, oh. Gene, Steve, tell us about dynamic video with this. <laughs> sure, yeah. So, so you know, I, I think that uh, th there's been a lot of talk about the importance of video, and I know that's a very important topic for the Tom Ferry community. I think the challenge with video that we can all admit is creating video content, especially from an advertising perspective, is a massive pain in the butt, right? You've got to go and shoot the video, got to edit the video, and then you got to figure out how do you actually get this on social media. And so we know how important of a, of a subject this is because Facebook came to us and basically said, future of digital marketing on our platform is video advertisement. They ran a $50,000 test of their own money running ads for us to prove to us that a static advertisement versus a video advertisement, video outperforms four to five times, right? Mm -hmm. So what we basically did was we built out a platform that turns running video ads for your listings in a, into a two click, one minute process. Here's the process. Go to the next slide. You enter your MLS number into our backend system. You press find that number. We, we, we immediately pull all of the photos of that listing, all of the property details, all of that kind of stuff. We put it into a single dialogue that you can click and edit. You choose a one of our beautiful templates that we pre-built out for you, right? And then once you press submit, Boom, video automatically gets rendered, right? We use AI to choose the photos that we're gonna showcase in the ad. We combine all the MLS data. Hey, Jason, and, Jason, and, Jason just perked up. I know Jason is totally, he's like, what? Okay, AI to the best photo? Facebook's AI. Tell me more, I wanna know more about that. 
Sure, sure. Yeah. So we use modern state of the art photo recognition AI, right, to go through all the photos. That, let's say there's 40 photos on listing. We choose the highest resolution kitchen, bathroom, exterior, you know, um, <clears throat> backyard photos, all this kind of stuff. So we choose the top 10 photos from that 40 set that are all showing different content. And then we sequence them together, right? Because you want to show the exterior photo first and then the living room, then the uh, bedroom and so on and so forth. So we programmatically do all of that for you. Now, a client can decide to choose the photos that they want if they want to order specifically, but most clients just say, use the AI, let it go. That's, so that's a few clicks, basically put in your MLS number, put in 65 bucks, choose a form, like bam, and you can do this. It's like putting a dollar into a vending machine to get a cup. So think about it. Our clients don't have to go out and shoot a video, edit a video, upload a video, figure out how to run the marketing, change the formats for Instagram versus Facebook versus YouTube. It's like, bam, it was a few clicks and this thing ran. And because it's such, as G said, cost effective ad inventory, it runs everywhere. It reaches thousands. And here's the big, big thing, Jason, which is our clients now get to go to listing presentations and say, look what I'm going to do for you. I'm not going to just put this home in the MLS. I am actually going to, I am going to reach out to your entire market and run these amazing videos in your home. Look at this video example that I'm going to do, right? And while they've got the listing, they can now share one touch reports with their seller, showing the thousands of people who have watched, viewed, clicked, liked, and engaged with their listing. It's pretty cool. Nuts, man. It's pretty nuts. Um, and it, you know, the thing that comes to mind is the statement, uh, the enemy of the best is good enough. And if you can get the photos, a nice pan, a template, streamline it so that it's just a turnkey process, and then still check into all the benefits of Facebook advertising and how cheap it is and all the dynamic retargeting. To me, that's just, a, that's just an easy win because it's happening while you sleep. It's happening behind the scenes. It's happening uh, in a way that's just ideal for the lifestyle of a busy agent. I love it. Um, all right, let's, let's jump along a little bit more. I want to talk about open integrations, which let me kind of... This is, these are my words. Let me kind of break this down for the audience right now. Um, I've seen a lot of clients struggle with, they don't want to get locked in. And sometimes they just want to get like one tool that does one thing, but then it doesn't work or talk to this other thing or this other thing. And so they go to tools like Zapier or if this, then that, or whatever, to try to make everything talk and work together. Or they buy another tool that does everything except that it's maybe not as good at some aspects of that one thing. And so you're like, well, how can I get out of that one thing and do all this over here? Your, your mojo, your approach, you know, that's what I'm looking for, appears to be more about just, hey, we'll play ball with anybody. We'll play ball, uh, open integrations. Can you talk to us about your philosophy and your approach on that? Yeah, so I think that like sort of, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was this philosophy of like, we've got to build an all-in-one. We've got to do your marketing. We got to create your website. We have to have a CRM and it's all built in in this one sort of walled garden, right? But that's like really a decade and a half ago. The future is about two-way open integrations. So as opposed to being an all-in-one, it's about being a one-to-all, right? We want to be the best company at digital marketing, at lead generation, at lead nurture, at lead communication. Can we do that? and also have the best CRM in the space, there's no way, right? We've got to focus in our lane, right? Which is the essence of our partnership with the real estate teams. They're not, they want to be the best real estate teams. They don't necessarily, they can't necessarily be the best digital marketing company and spend millions of dollars in digital marketing, right? So right. there's so many great CRMs out there right now. Our decision was let's have a two way open dialogue of information going back with those folks. So it kind of looks like this. It's like we're this hub, right? And maybe you're on FirePoint, maybe you're on Sierra, maybe you're on Follow Boss, maybe you're on Lion Desk, maybe you're on Chime. These guys have all said, we love what Wailopo does. We want Wailopo to do what it does. We want to be the CRM of choice. So you can send us information, we'll send you information, right? And that's the future. Not of some player that's like, no, we're not going to play in the sandbox with everyone. What happens if one of our clients wants to move from one of these CRMs 
to another CRM at some point based on feature or price. They can do that. They don't miss a beat with us. Nothing changes. Or maybe they won't kick us to the curb, but they love follow boss. Like they love their CRM. That's fine. They can get leads in from lots of other sources, right? And they can kick us to the curb. So they're no longer a prisoner. It's about giving real estate agents and teams independence, right? They can do what they want. They're not a prisoner and say, oh, I got to live with this you know, sort of crappy digital marketing because they're my CRM. Or I have to live with this crappy CRM because they're my digital marketer right? That's the future. And there's all kinds of other great third parties, you know, things that are coming out all the time. And if our clients tell us, oh my God, CC is amazing, or HomeBot's amazing, or call actions amazing, whatever it is, we want to be able to say, sure, no yeah. problem. Let it plug and play. And so what it could look like on the CRM side, here's an example with Follow-Up Boss, one of the best CRMs out there, absolutely amazing. And you can see like, all of the two-way links, right? You want to see your Raya conversations. You want to see the um, priority alerts. You want to see what homes they've looked at. Every single thing we just showed you for the last half an hour is all visible in this integration with, with Follow Boss. All right. Which I love this. And we got to hustle. We're running low on yeah. time right now. Yeah. Uh, just because everybody's going to jump into future sessions. Talk to us about your viewpoints around database and it lasting forever and how you guys approach that from a marketing standpoint. I think it's a great segue, right? From the importance of, the, of having a great CRM um, to this final point, which is the number one piece of advice that we can give everyone, which is build a massive database over time. Create a plan. If you wanna get to like 50,000 leads, like do that over time. Like, you know, say, hey, it's gonna take me five years. I'm gonna do 10,000 leads a year. I wanna get to 50,000 leads, why? Because when you get to 50,000 leads, for a fact, we have the stats, you're going to get 10,000 monthly return visitors every single month, 20%, they're coming back. Of the 20% that come back, 18% of them are going to turn into the priority alerts, tapping on the shoulder, whoa, elevated buyer behavior, elevated seller behavior. So 1,800 a month, you don't even have a team that big to handle 1,800 priority alerts a month. Of the 1,800, 90% of them, sorry, 90 of them, you're going to work with as a buyer or seller. And in that month, you'll actually close 15 of them. That's the funnel. Month. Now, yeah. Now, there's very few people that have 50,000 leads in their database, but with the proper systems in place, getting in free leads, organic leads, paid leads, you can get there. And how do you get there? Right. And why do you want to get there? This is what I call the money shot, Jason. Yeah. This, okay. is, this is basically, it right so you go through like this is no new lead gen once you get to 50,000 leads you don't have to buy leads anymore right this is basically all those stats i talked about and if you want to bs test it look at that 0.367 number you're only closing one third of one percent of your database and that's it one third of one percent of your database that's it you're basically being conservative anyways on this i mean ridiculously conservative right i'm saying you are spending money on remarketing you are spending on money on AI, right? And you have some tech fees, but no new lead gen, right? And this is the bottom line. You could be generating well over a million dollars in GCI if you have this database. So, this goes back to your fishbowl analogy, which is get upstream, right? Get upstream, get the fish in the bowl, and then own that relationship. Anyways, keep, keep rolling. We're low on time. Right. So the question is, like, if you wanted to do this with just the portals, we did the math here. It would take you 83 years. <laughs> it would take you 83 years to get to that coveted 50,000 leads. And that's a very conservative 50 bucks a lead, right? And we know in a lot that of one, There's a chance. I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, triple, quadruple that, right? With triple, quadruple click, purely it would take you 12 and a half years, right? With social, you could do it in five years. We would argue that you should do both social, pay-per-click, as well as there's so many ways to get free leads into the system as well, right? Like, you know, and Jason, you've done entire webinars on that, right? So you can, you can absolutely get there in five years or less. And like I said, it's, this is it. This is the money shot. This is why you're doing it. And why is this so near and dear to my heart? Because you stop chasing commission checks forever you've actually built long-term enterprise value in your system. Your database becomes a forever income producing machine. And if you have the systems in place and you have some people on your team, you actually can let it run and you can let it produce income. And I'm, I'm particularly passionate 
about not just living paycheck to paycheck, about living a life where you create a value that can outlive yourself. So there ends the sermon. <laughs> Love that. All right. My mind's a little blown and I thought I knew a lot about what you guys did. Uh, I got to tell you, like my highlight is I'm sort of geeking out on the Google PPC dynamic aspect that you guys are leveraging. Um, and I think that's testimony to the fact that you're focused on one thing, digital marketing and doing it really well, which allows you to be innovative and forge new frontiers. So both of you, G, Howard, thank you very much for sharing. I know the audience, I know you guys watched, you got a lot of value out of it. Um, appreciate you guys very much. This was fun. Thanks for letting me moderate and ask you questions. I look forward to the next time. Thanks for having us. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for the organization. Thanks, guys.